let's practice. Come to a nice comfortable seat, bring your hands on top of your knees and start by making a big circle in one direction. Seeing how your body's feeling today. Make a circle in the other direction. Come to center, roll the shoulders forward. Roll the shoulders back. And then move your head forward and back. Look right and left. Right with your right shoulder, left your left shoulder. to center, chin to your chest, tilt your head to the right. You can take your right hand and kind of pull your head down a little bit as you relax the left shoulder away from your ear. Come to center, chin to your chest, go to the other side, use your left hand, tilt your head slightly down as you relax your right shoulder. And come to center. Interlace all ten fingers, turn the palms forward, take a deep inhale. Exhale, chin to the chest, around the back, draw the navel to the spine. Inhale, extend your spine, arch your back a little bit, move your arms behind the ears. Exhale. Press the hips forward, moving the shoulder blades away from the spine. One more, inhale. Exhale. This time we're going to stop in the middle, hands right in front of the chest. Chin stays at your chest, and then take both hands to the right, pressing through the heel of the left hand, opening up the space right around your left shoulder blade. Go to center, go to the other side. Crossing through the heel of the right hand to move the right shoulder blade away from the spine. Inhale, go to center, arms up, and then take a stretch to the right. Right hand goes down, left arm goes up and over. Inhale, center, go to the other side. Inhale, center, gentle twist to the right. Inhale, center, gentle twist to the left. And come to center. Bring your hands at heart center. Allow your hips to ground into the earth. Relax your ankles, your knees, your hips. With each inhale, lift and open your chest. And with each exhale, relax your shoulders, lengthen the back of your neck, and soften your gaze into your heart. The hands at heart center will help us stay a little bit alert and present, and also connect with the energy of light and love. Our hands are our limbs of action. They help us cook and eat and write and hug and do so many other things. And when we bring the hands at heart center, we are asking that all of our actions come from a place of light and love. And so as you sit in stillness, allow your energy to shift towards that place of light, love, contentment, joy, peacefulness. Shoot your gaze inwards, allowing the mind to rest for a little bit.
connecting with your spirit. Establish that connection, that presence. Keep the lift of your chest. Take your hands to a comfortable place in your lap, either on your knees, or one on top of each other, on your lap. And we're going to do just some mindful breathing. Inhale to the count of four. Exhale to the count of six. I'll guide the first few rounds, and then you'll keep going on your own. Let's begin together. Inhale for one, two, three. Four, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, exhale. fireplace that we begin our practice. Bring your hands at heart center. Inhale one more time. Release your chest. Exhale by your palms to your fingertips. Slowly open your eyes. Lift your head. Send your legs in front of you. Flex the feet. Interlace all ten fingers and turn the palms forward. Inhale, arms up. Dandasana. Flex the feet and press the legs down into the earth. Firm the elbows and lift your arms up. And this is just helping us to straighten the legs from the position we were just in. And allowing us to wake up our system a little bit by lengthening the spine and opening our chest. You're going to bend the right leg in, take the right elbow to the inside, left arm behind you, keep your left leg active, flex the foot and press the leg down. Inhale, lift and open your chest, exhale, twist, your waist, your ribs, your chest, all the way around. Pressing your right elbow into your right knee and rolling your left upper arm bone back. And change. Other side. Left leg comes in. Left elbow to the inside. Right arm behind you. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, twist. And come to center. Let's go right on to all fours. Hands under the shoulders, knees a little bit behind the hips so that you have room to extend your spine. Inhale, lengthen, look up. 
Exhale, chin to the chest. Round, lean back. Inhale, and look up. Exhale, round. Once you have the movement, close your eyes, find your breath. Let the, move, let the movement evolve into whatever you need today. So if your hips want to move to the right and left, it will stretch in your waist. If you want to take your hips to the right heel, the hips to the left heel, stretch the outer hips. Come to center. We'll start with a little dynamic movement. Inhale, take your right arm up and open your heart up to the sky. Exhale, thread it through under the left, thread the air to the floor. Two more times. Inhale, open. Exhale, through. Downward facing dog. Once you get to your first down dog, I want you to just bend the right knee deeply. Straighten the left leg. Send your left calf muscle down to the floor. Lift your left kneecap as you move your left thigh bone back. And then switch. Bend the left knee deeply. Straighten the right leg. Pressing the heel and calf muscle to the floor, lift your right kneecap and move your right hip crease up and back. And come to center. You're going to bend both knees deeply. Press your hands strongly to lift your hips, creating length through your spine, your side ribs, your waist, and lower back. And now keeping your chest moving towards your thighs, firm your triceps, and little by little, straighten your legs back. Only once the legs have gone back, then begin to send the heels down. So you want to create as much length as possible. And if when your heels go down, your pose shrinks, then maybe just keep the knees slightly bent and continue to lift your hips up to the sky. From the height of your hips, release your head. And rest. Knees down to the floor, child's pose. Let your breath come back to a quiet place. and 
come back up center. You're going to take your right foot forward into Anjaniyasana. If you have really tight hips or hamstrings, you might want to use two blocks for your hands. If you don't have blocks, it's okay. Your hands can go on the floor and you're just going to lean forward any amount. The back toes can be tucked under, so if you're really flexible, it might be best for you to tuck your toes under so you can engage your outer left hip. If you're really tight, then maybe untucking the toes will feel better because it'll give you a deeper stretch through the front of the hip. So figure out what you need to be doing with that back leg. Feels better for you. And then bend the front leg, lift and open your heart and take a few deep breaths here. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Three more. shift back. You're now going to straighten your front foot, your front leg, and flex the front foot, and lean the hips back as you fold forward. Send your breath to the upper back, into the right hamstring. Center, same thing on the other side. Left foot goes forward. Bend the front leg deeply. Tuck or untuck your back toes. Use your blocks if you have them or if you need them. Lift and open your chest. Inhale. Exhale. Keep 
pressing your hands strongly to lift your hips high and release your head. Walk your hands another five inches back. If your heels were not on the floor before, maybe they're on the floor now. If they're still not on the floor, you're still just moving them down towards the floor, even if they don't get there. Lift the arches of your feet. Spread your lower back from the center to the sides. Release your, the crown of the head to the floor. And take a few breaths here. Walk your hands back. This time your hands are directly under your shoulders. Make little tents with your fingertips. And then from that, lift energy through the elbows into the shoulder blades. With your upper back engaged, pull your heart forward. The whole time, you're lifting your kneecaps and thighs and moving your legs back as you move your heart forward. Connect the energy from the hands into your shoulder blades. And change to come out. Bend the knees deeply. Take your hands at your waist, elbows back. And with a flat back on the next inhale, come up. Arms by your side, palms face up. Close your eyes and find your breath. Your mat is vertical. You might want to switch it so that it's horizontal, so that when you look at the computer, you don't have to turn your neck. And then we're going to open up our legs four or five feet apart. Inhale, arms up. You're going to hook your thumbs like this. Hook your thumbs and spread all your fingers. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help you lift your chest up a little bit more. If that grip feels uncomfortable for your shoulders, don't worry about it. Just forget it and open up your arms. It's all right. But if it's available, it might help you to lift your torso away from your hips a little bit more. At first, just ground through the legs. Be in the center of your heels. Connect the energy from the legs into your hips. And then from your waist, send energy down into the earth so you feel really nice and grounded. And then inhale, lift and open your chest, moving the arms back. You're going to Keep the lift that the arms give you. Keep your chest open. And without losing the height of your chest, take your hands at your waist. Roll the upper arm bones back to really open your heart. Inhale, and as you exhale, hand to the hips go forward, thigh bones go back, hands come to the floor in front of you like a wide-legged down dog. You want to make sure that your hips stay over your heels. So you're not leaning back and you're not leaning forward. You're sliding up your heels with your legs and your hips and it's your torso that then goes forward. Good. Spread the skin at the bottom of the feet. Lift energy up through the legs and into the hip creases. Deepen the hip creases and from there, release the crown of the head to the floor. Slowly come up. Toe heel the feet a little closer together so you have a more stable stance. Bend your knees a lot. Take your hands at your waist, elbows back. Inhale, come on up. Feet together, arms by your side. Close your eyes and find your breath in Tadasana. If you have 
have tight hamstrings, you might want to consider putting two blocks, one on either side of your mat, a little bit behind you. Take your hands at your waist and open up your feet four or five feet apart once again. We're going into triangle pose, Trikonasana. Inhale, arms up. Hook the thumbs like we did before. Lift and open your heart. And then take your left toes in, revolve your whole right leg around. Toes face to the right side. Inhale, open up your arms. Extend from your heart to your thumbs. Continuously lift energy up the legs into the hips and keeping those actions, the legs coming up and creating stability and the arms extending out. Inhale and exhale slowly go down so that you don't collapse your pose as you go in. Once you're here, use your breath to deepen your pose. Inhale, open your chest, extend through your arms. Exhale, ground your heels, firm your knees, move your right hip crease back. Three more breaths. Top head at your waist. Bend the front leg, inhale, come up, both hands at your waist, toes forward, inhale, arms up, switch the hook of the thumb so the non-dominant grip is on top, take a deep breath, lift and lengthen, and then take your right toes in and revolve your whole left leg around. Deep breath, open your heart, and then as you exhale, Head to the hips and go forward, continuously opening your chest by extending your arms out to the sides. Ground the heels, firm your knees. Engage your upper body and let it come into the spine. And then with your breath, open the front of the body and let it lean back into the back body. So the front body is nice and bright, and the back body is coming in to support the pose from behind. Three more breaths here. Come out, bend the front leg, hop it at your waist, inhale, come on up. Left toes in, feet together, arms by your side, rest in Tadasana. Tadasana means mountain pose. You're supposed to be completely still, but if you pay close attention, you will notice that chances are you're not. There are little fluctuations happening, a little bit of leaning back or leaning forward or to the side, a little wobbly feeling. Can you observe that? And then find the body's in, in string, intrinsic balance so that you can be as still as possible with little effort. So you don't want to make your pose rigid and stiff either. You want to find that effortless place where you can be still and balanced and quiet, feeling yourself awake in this human body, realizing that you are not your body, you are the spirit that dwells within and gives this body life. And so when we stand still and we receive our poses in Tadasana, that's your intention. It's actually the most sacred part of the practice, this tiny little space in between the poses, because it allows you to just breathe and feel and observe. Going into extended side angle. Inhale, arms up. Hook your thumbs and open up your feet really nice and wide. 
take your left toes in, revolve your whole right leg around. Inhale, lift. This time, bend the front leg. Exhale, take your left hand, at first, probably to your elbow. If you don't have a block, that's probably where you want your hand. If you have a block, try to take it to the outside of your foot. If that proves difficult, you could always put it on the inside of the foot. But having the hand on the knee or on the outside of the foot is going to allow you to open up your chest a little bit more. Bend the front leg as deeply as you can. Ground the back heel and continuously reach your top arm over your ear. Right toes in. Inhale, arms up. Deep breath, lift and lengthen. Then take your right toes in, revolve your whole left leg around. Inhale, deep breath. Exhale, bend the front leg. At first, elbow to the knee. For most of us, this is going to be the variation. You have to have really open hamstrings and hips in order to go lower without losing the integrity of the pose. But if it is available, go ahead and take your hand outside of the left foot. Ideally to a block, and if you have to, maybe a little bit lower. Find your breath here. your waist. Inhale, come on up. Left toes in, feet together, arms by your side, close your eyes and find your breath. Tadasana. Katasana chair pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit on your chair. Weight is in the heels. Bend your ankles. Bend your knees. Bend your hips. From your waist, energy goes down. And from your waist, energy goes up. Using your arms to lengthen your spine. Straighten your arms. Straighten your elbows. Spread all your fingers and actively reach your arms up. Take the hands behind you, interlace all ten fingers, roll the upper arm bones back, and then release into a forward bend, keeping your knees slightly bent or maybe even deeply bent if you have to, and release your head to the your hands to your lower back first and then to the floor and then keeping your chin at your chest slowly roll up when you get to the top roll the upper arm bones back close your eyes and be still in Tadasana Let's do it again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit on your chair. Lengthen from your lower back ribs, right in the middle of your back. Lengthen energy down through the top of the buttocks, down through the hamstrings, down through the heels. You are leaning back so much, you're almost going to fall back. But you don't because your arms continue to reach forward. But that's how much I want you to lean back. And the more you lean back, the more you have to reach your arms up. And then take them behind you, interlace all ten fingers, and release. Head to the floor. 
knuckles up to the sky, knees bent. Hands to your lower back first to release, bend to the floor, and then slowly roll up, one vertebra at a time, back up to Tadasana. And let's go back to downward facing dog. Spread your fingers, firm your elbows, lift your hips high. And now you see what they mean when they say that down dog is a resting pose. After those standing poses, down dog feels really good. It helps you to bring your body back to symmetry, and calm the nervous system a little. to your knees and we're going to do half camel. Hands at your waist. You're going to take your right hand to your right heel and your left arm up and behind you. Even if camel is not an option for you, sometimes this half camel is an option. So see if this feels okay. Actively reaching your top arm behind you and change, come to center, and then switch sides. Inhale, and lift your right arm behind you, as you lean back and push your hips forward. If this is all that's available to you, you're gonna do two more sets of this. If you have a full camel variation, we're gonna do two sets of full camel. Hands at your lower back, roll the upper arm bones back, tailbone down, inhale, lift, and then push your hips forward. Hold on to your heels and lean back. Slowly come on up, support your back, take a break in child's pose before we do it one more time. Slowly come on up, support your back, roll the upper arm bones back. The other option is to just do half a camel, which means that you keep your hands on your back and just go back as far as you can without reaching for your heels. Honor whatever feels right for your body today. And change. Slowly coming up, rest. So if you need to adjust your computer so you could see better. 
go ahead. We're gonna sit on the floor with your legs forward and then take your right leg out, your left leg in for Janu Shirshasana, head to knee pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. You can let your hands rest in a comfortable place and make this a passive pose. Sometimes we pull and we go a little deeper. Today the intention is to just release any tension from your lower back that might have come from that previous camel pose. So find a variation that feels good and it allows you to get a little stretch on the left side of your lower back. Round here today. You can do this pose two ways, but a straight back or a rounded back. Today I want you to round it so that you release any tension from that back bend before. up your legs nice and wide, grab the inside of your knees and then bring the soles of the feet together, the knees apart for Baddha Konasana. If your knees are quite high, you might want to consider moving them away from you a little bit. Otherwise, bring them as close to you as you like and then go forward. Hands in a comfortable place, release your head and breathe. Both hands to the right. Okay. 
don't fold the pants to the left. forward one last time. And slowly come up. We're going to come down to the floor. So knees together, extend them forward. You're going to lay down on your back. Eventually, I want you to have a pillow or a blanket or something for your head in Shavasana. So if you need to grab something for your head, this would be the time. Um, and then have your socks or sweater nearby so that when we go into Shavasana, you can make yourself nice and comfy. We're just gonna do one bridge pose, first dynamically, and then we'll hold it in a spinal twist, and this will be unwinding our class. So hands by your side, palms face down. Inhale, lift your hips slowly. Exhale, one vertebra at a time, slowly lower down. Inhale, press your feet into the floor, lift your hips as high as you can, contracting your buttocks and hamstrings. Exhale, slowly lower, one vertebra at a time. On the last one, we hold. Inhale, if it's available, interlace the fingers underneath the body. If that's not available, grab the sides of your mat so that you have something to hang on to and engage your upper back as you lift your hips high. And change. Slowly lower down, bring the right knee to your chest, give it a nice hug. with your left hand. Take your right arm out to the side like an airplane wing and then twist to the left. your left knee with your right hand, go over and across. Slowly come to center, bring your knees into your chest, make little circles with the knees in one direction, little circles with the knees in the other direction. Place that pillow under your head, give your knees one last big hug, not just a physical hug, but can you give yourself the energy of the hug and really thank yourself for your practice today. Allowing your whole system to feel nurtured and loved. And change. Before we settle into our final Shavasana, when you grab the sides of your mat and then pull it towards your heels, so you slide yourself a little bit back towards your head. And that's going to just lengthen the skin on the lower back so that you can rest more comfortably here. Arms by your side, palms face up. 
I'm going to guide you through a little meditation. You don't have to do anything. Just bring your mind and your awareness to your right arm and relax your right arm from your fingertips to your shoulder. Relax the right side of your torso from your shoulder to your hip. And your right leg from your hip to your toes. Relax your left arm from your fingertips to your shoulder. The left side of the torso from your shoulder to your hip. Your left leg from your hip to your toes. Relax the back of the body, heels, calf muscles, back of the knees and thighs, buttocks, lower, middle, and upper back, back of the neck, back of the head, crown of the head, forehead, eyes, nose, cheeks, ears, mouth, jaw, throat. Inhale as the chest rise, exhale as the chest fall. Inhale, the belly rise. Exhale, the belly fall. Shavasana is the most important part of your practice. It's where your body absorbs all of the work that you've done. With the poses, we create space by getting rid of rubbish. Physical rubbish, mental rubbish, emotional rubbish. And then in Shavasana, you allow that space to get filled up again with breath, with peace, with light, and love, and joy. And so allow yourself to truly savor the stillness of the mind and body in Shavasana. Thank you. 